We've all had the experience of an icebreaker that we honestly thought was a waste of time. Most icebreakers are a waste of time. And in this video, I wanna show you the evidence-based way of breaking the ice and cultivating psychological safety in the least amount of time possible. First, I wanna share with you the ways that we get icebreakers wrong. First of all, a lot of icebreakers are shallow, meaning there's not any vulnerability being exercised. There's not even an invitation to be vulnerable. Secondly, a lot of icebreakers just exist in the mind. They're just conversational. And when we're merely conversing, we're not activating the full neurochemistry of connection that's possible if we were to incorporate our bodies. So two so far, shallowness and the mere conversationality of icebreakers. This is how most leaders do icebreakers. They don't create an invitation to be vulnerable and they focus only on conversation. So what is the evidence-based way of breaking the ice? Well, I wouldn't even use the term icebreaker. It's got negative connotations. I would instead use connection energizer. So I, in this video, the one takeaway is to move away from icebreakers and move toward connection energizers. So for me, the goal of a connection energizer is threefold. Elevate the participants' physical energy, give them a dose of joy, and increase their emotional closeness or the psychological safety in the room. So, how do we do that? Well, there's three stages that I teach in my method. The first stage begins with relaxation, okay? Just getting people into a relaxed state, whether that is through breathing, whether that's through um, closing your eyes and doing uh, a visualization. Getting people into a parasympathetic state is so important. Usually icebreakers may not work because people are activated, they're stressed. They're not in a state where their muscles are relaxed and they're calm. The second stage of a connection energizer relates to the joy and energy. Okay, it has to do with vitality. And this involves moving, moving in synchrony, doing a stretch together, or somehow incorporating movement into the prompt that you give your participants. Power poses is a great example. Put on some champion music or Eye of the Tiger and get people to share their favorite power pose. This is great, elevates energy, gets people out of, out of their seats, and it also demands vulnerability. All right, so the third stage is when belonging is created. So after the first two stages, the body is energized and there's joy. And so already the body is ready to connect. In other words, the body's in a pro-social state. Again, a lot of icebreakers don't work because the body is not in a pro-social state. The body's not ready to connect. And this is why if we just focus on conversation and participants are sitting and talking, their bodies are often not in a state optimized for connection. That's why it's so important to incorporate movement, to incorporate stretching, music, all these modalities that prepare the body for meaningful connection, deeper connection, belonging, building activities. So the third stage of a connection energizer is belonging, okay? And what we do in this stage is we offer participants an intentional prompt. This prompt, is the structure for participants to be vulnerable if they choose. The prompt that you give your participants can either be shallow or it can be deep. It can be impersonal, factual, or it can be personal and heartfelt, emotional. And so the prompt you give your participants, even if it is a very personal prompt, 
you can communicate to your participants that they can choose their level of vulnerability. So we talked about three stages. Moving away from an icebreaker to a connection energizer. Icebreakers, they're, they don't involve any vulnerability and they focus on only conversation. Connection energizers, they get participants into a pro-social state, a state optimized for human connection, and then they use intentional prompts that invite participants to be vulnerable. Off the top of my head, here are a few intentional prompts that I've used. Where have you felt like you most belonged? When was a moment in your life where you felt a tremendous amount of joy? What is one really good thing that happened to you recently? What was an event in your life that was difficult for you? These are some examples. And the goal is to get people sharing stories, stories about how they've come to be themselves. And when we understand the background of people's lives, we have a lot more reason to connect with them. We realize, holy crap, these people are so wise. Their experiences are so profound. They're human too. And they have things to teach me. And that's what we wanna create in a group. We want people to look at the person across the room and be like, that person has something to teach me. I wanna pay attention to them and connect with them. That's what we wanna create in a group. So if you wanna do that, stop using icebreakers and instead use some power poses and connection energizers. Woo!